Wolfpack are on the road tonight looking to go up to Charlottesville and conquer the Cavaliers. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 back in bonus bets guaranteed when you place just a $5 bet. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Happy Wednesday. Happy game day to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. NC State basketball team is on the road tonight up in Charlottesville. Round two with the Virginia Cavaliers. The last time we saw Virginia, I believe it was a couple weeks ago on January the 6th in Raleigh. We won by a score of 76 to 60. What we're going to do is kind of walk back through that game, talk about some things that did work, some things that didn't work, and the things that need to come with us on the road to Charlottesville this evening. A couple things before we get started. The game tonight, Virginia is favored by four and a half, which is not insignificant, but it's also not surprising. Virginia actually holds the nation's longest active home winning streak right now with 20 home wins in a row. Hopefully the Wolfpack have something to say about that by the end of Wednesday night, but it's a tough place to play. We we went up there and struggled last year. We're not the only team to have struggles up in Charlottesville. It's a very difficult place to go in there and get a win, and it's also difficult to beat somebody twice, especially in the ACC. The ACC is a little bit of a buzzsaw this year as it has been the last couple years. It's going to be a tough test for the Wolfpack tonight. These are two teams that are are very much so they're they're very neck and neck right now. There are multiple teams that are right there in that range of two to three conference losses that are right below the boys and baby group. Like that's the reality and both of us fall in that category. This game is has significant ramifications going forward for both of these teams in terms of what we want to do for our future going forward with the seeding and all that, but also just from a momentum standpoint, because there's a certain style of basketball you have to play to beat Virginia. Even this Virginia team that people say, oh, this isn't the Virginia of old, you still have to play a certain way to beat Virginia. You still have to have certain things go right for you to beat Virginia, and we need to see some of those things go right tonight. And the last time we saw Virginia, some of those things did go right for the Wolfpack. I mean, you shoot – 49% overall, 35% from three, which includes 10 shots from the perimeter. How how crazy does 10 threes sound to us now a couple weeks later? It's it's Uh, mind-boggling, the little bit of the slump that they're going through at the moment. You beat Virginia 76 to 60. I would say so far this season, that has probably felt like our most complete effort on both sides of the ball, both offensively and defensively. It felt like we could kind of get whatever we wanted against Virginia, which was a little bit surprising because of the Virginia teams of years past, but the offense flowed well. You saw a lot of Michael O'Connell in that game. He played 27 minutes. He had five assists all over the court in that one. That's something that really stuck out to me. Another thing that stuck out to me from that first game is Mo Diara only played three minutes. So you did all of this, dominated Virginia without any Mo Diara. So you think about adding him into the lineup and what he could bring tonight, he could be a significant factor. Absolutely. He's our leading rebounder. He is a guy that I would probably say he's our best rim protector as well um, on this current roster. It's it's a situation where Modiar is immensely valuable against a team like this where you look at their, their best playmaker and what he does well, and that's obviously Beekman. He gets to the rim. He finishes. He puts pressure on defense and all that. But if you have a guy like Modiar stepping up playing and doing a really good job of protecting the rim, now you're looking at a very different situation because now you're not leaving uh, a guy like McNeely or a guy like Groves open from deep. 
the defense the last time we played Virginia, I thought was spectacular. Of course, they're never really going to blow your doors off, and we held them to 60 points. So that is a good day at the office when you're playing Virginia. But, you know, you held them to 43% overall shooting, 33% from deep. They shot only 69% from the foul line, which is kind of shocking for Virginia team. You turn them over eight times, which is maybe doesn't sound like a lot, but it is for Virginia because they're so disciplined with the basketball. As many times as you can turn them over, you have to take full advantage of those every single time. Virginia, we all know what they are defensively. If you play into their hands and you throw the ball all over the court, they're probably going to strangle the life out of you as the game goes on there. So it's very important to take care of the basketball, which we'll discuss more in just a little bit. They got to find ways to hit shots overall. You have to find extra movement around DJ Burns, around the three-point line. You have to play very consistent team basketball if you're going to have a shot at picking out Virginia uh, on the road. As they say, the ACC is a make-or-miss league, and especially when you're playing against this Virginia team because the pack line defense counts on you missing a lot of shots. It counts on you not being skilled enough to make defenders pay for sagging off you a little bit. And, hey – Tony Bennett's a national champ for a reason, so obviously it's worked out well enough so far. Getting into some of our shooting the last time we saw them, you know, we had three threes from Dennis Parker. We had two from Jaden Taylor, two from DJ Horn, one from Casey Morsell, a three from MJ Rice. Who knows if we're going to see MJ Rice in this game? A little bit of a hiatus lately, and Michael O'Connell dropped in one as well, which kind of speaks to another point. The offense was very spread out in this game. Dennis Parker had 15, Jaden Taylor had 15, Horn 14, Middlebrooks had 8, Rice 7, O'Connell 6, and so on. It's going to take another one of these efforts. Everyone's got to get involved. The only way you can have somebody lead the way is if you get a DJ Horn who's red hot from deep, or maybe a Casey Morsell who's red hot from deep. We welcome that with both arms here, but at the end of the day, everyone's got to get involved, like you mentioned, Kenton to get in front of this pack line defense. Yeah, and, and you know, you talk about the the way in which you need multiple guys to show up, but that was the last game where Dennis Parker Jr. scored double, in the double digits so far this season. Um, we've played four games since then, and his totals have been four, eight, two, and three. So hopefully tonight we get another uh, Dennis Parker Jr. night because he's it's a homecoming for him. He's going back home. Alexa, play homecoming because he's – He's going back. It's time for him to put on another one of those shows that he already put on against UVA. It is indeed a homecoming game for Dennis Parker Jr. Hopefully he can go even harder this time against the Cavaliers. Prove a point to say, hey, y'all passed up on me. I'm going to make you pay for it, and I'm going to make you pay for it on your doorstep. Up next, we're going to get into Kenton's keys for this game in Charlottesville after a quick word from our sponsors. Today's Wednesday sponsor is FanDuel. The NFC and AFC Championship games are this week, and we're currently in the middle of a spectacular college basketball slate this week, so you have got to get in on the action at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $150 back in bonus bets guaranteed when you place just a $5 bet. That's right, $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use, and there are so many different ways to win, including live same-game parlays, finding bets within the new Explore tab, and making a parlay in the Parlay Hub, which is the best way to find the most popular parlays. So if you think Lamar Jackson and the Ravens are going to advance to the Super Bowl this weekend, get on over to FanDuel. If you think Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are going to go into Baltimore and advance to yet another Super Bowl, get on over to FanDuel. If you're taking the 49ers, if you're taking Kenton Gibbs, Detroit Lions, get on over to FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup or maybe this weekend a touchdown. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Middle portion of our Wednesday show here. It's time to get into Kenton's keys for tonight's matchup on the road. All righty. So the first key we are playing an- yet another team from the Commonwealth. And last time, we were giving away all of our wealth, which is our possessions. Take care of the damn ball. Stop turning the ball over. We need 12 or less. Really, really, I'm thinking 10 or less. But I said 12 to be generous because, I mean, you know, even 12 gives you six more possessions than you had last game. So, you know, you, you need to take care of the ball. 12 or less turnovers. 
The second, run McNeely and Groves off the three-point line, less than four three three-point field goals made between both of them this game. Let me tell you something. Those two are sharpshooter Supremes. Those two are the guys in the scouting report that it says, hey, if somebody has an open lane, you don't help off him. This is not the guy to help off of. Both of them, I believe, are shooting well above 40% from deep. Uh, yeah, you, you, that's that's a bad proposition. That's a bad proposition. If you have to trust your bigs to, to defend Beekman at the rim or leave one of these two wide open, trust your bigs. Trust me, it is worth it every single time because – Again, these two will absolutely kill you if they get rolling. Next, I mentioned them in this previous point, and I got to bring them up again. Hey, Jaden Taylor, you want D-point consideration? Well, I've got just the job for you. You need to not only stop Reese Beekman from scoring, you need to stop him from creating for others. One of the biggest things that really good defense does to players is if you are not a playmaker supreme, it clouds your vision because now you have to be constantly thinking, am I taking care of the ball? Am I doing what I need to do to keep the ball away from this guy? Am I doing what I need to do to get my uh, team in good position despite this, this very intense pressure defense that's coming? And so with that being said, he needs to account for less than 20 points in terms of total points and the points that come off assists from him. Last but not least, punish the pack line defense. We talked about this earlier in the show. We talked about how it affected the game last game. Basically, the fundamental principle of the pack line defense is like nobody extends out beyond the free throw line pretty much. They're like, hey, we'll, we'll wait right here to make it really difficult on your ball handlers, and we'll be okay. If you can knock down the threes, you'll beat us, but we don't think you can. Well, if they don't think you can, you have to prove them wrong, okay? Okay. When they say, oh, yeah, we're fine, give him that. He's self-checked. You got to say, excuse me, pardon me, my brother of Christ, here's three. Take these with you, buddy. Take these with you, okay? I need to see a, an immense amount of sharp shooting from the pack in this game in order for us to get a win. It's really no surprise as to how these keys were formulated because this is exactly what worked the last time we saw Virginia. Taking care of the basketball, 12 or less in this game, that's because we only had six the last time we played them. And we still have a sour taste in our mouth from turning the ball over 18 times against Virginia Tech. They themselves pride themselves on not turning the ball over and instead turning you over. So NC State cannot be given out freebies the entire time because Virginia will absolutely make you pay for it. Last time we saw them, we did a good job of this. You have to be able to repeat that. Uh, tonight on the road. Last time we saw Virginia, McNeely and Groves actually combined for four exactly, but McNeely mm -hmm. had all of those four and Groves misses two attempts. You got to keep a lid on McNeely, especially. He's probably going to see more minutes than Groves, but Groves will come in in pockets where you need like a microwave score. That's the kind of guy he's going to be. You absolutely have to have somebody in McNeely's grill the entire time. As we got into garbage time the last time we saw Virginia, I believe if I remember correctly, that's where the bulk of his points came from in that game because he just he kept firing and hitting, and it made you think, Virginia's not going to climb back in this thing, are they? Yeah. That's the kind of shooter yeah. that McNeely is. He will make you pay if you give him enough space. So Reese Beekman is kind of self-explanatory here. He is the guy. He is the most gifted athlete on their team. It's almost astonishing the lack of athletes that Virginia you know, seemingly has this year. I thought last time we saw them, they didn't really impress me outside of Beekman, to be completely honest with you. So he is their best player. You have to treat him as such. We keep giving the challenge to Jaden Taylor. And every time Depoy is referenced when he sees RJ Davis or he sees Sean Padula, I think he's done a good job about 80% of that game. And then it breaks loose. And then RJ finishes for 19 or Sean Padula finishes in double digits. I need a complete effort on Reese Beekman in this one. Last yeah. time we saw him, he had 22 combined points and assists. If you can keep him under that, I think NC State's got a phenomenal shot at winning this game. And then the last one, of course, you have got to be able to hit your shots from deep because that is where Virginia is going to challenge you in this game. They're going to treat you like you cannot hit a three. You have got to prove them wrong 
in this one. Yeah, and be decisive with it. You know, if you're a guy that's a catch and shoot guy, when you catch the ball, shoot the ball. You're a catch and shoot guy. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're a uh, if if we're talking football here, and you are a a big body possession receiver, we don't expect you to be out here trying to juke and do things like your Dante Hall. It's just not a good proposition. And it puts you in harm's way. Same thing in terms of, of this team. If you're a catch and shoot guy and you want to put the ball on the floor and do all this extra stuff and all this extra razzle dazzle, that's where the turnovers will come. They are trusting that you will miss that shot. They're trusting that that's what the, their defense is built on. Uh, he self check. That's I had a Hooper explain the pack line defense to me as, it's basically saying you're self-checked to another team. And I'm like, and Virginia's gotten away with that. And he's like, yeah, they have. Because a lot of teams in college are, in fact, self-checked. That's just kind of the deal. So, you know, don't be self-checked. Make them extend out. Make them say, all right, we've got to abandon this to go true man-to-man. And, you know, we've got to get up in God's grill. And then you can exploit that lack of athleticism that you were referencing with a few blow buys. Get to the rim. Get yourself some easy buckets. Get yourself to the line. All that type of stuff. Despite the previous result against Virginia, you have yeah. to get out there and you have to make him play. Make Reese Beekman beat you. Make him beat you. Make him be the guy that he has to go for 30 or else they don't have a shot in this one. And so on, on that note, it's going to come down to discipline, just like it did the last time we saw them. Make them play. Don't beat yourself. And I like our chances on the road. You know, Coach Keats. Everybody talks about you, and you said you were sick and tired of the uh, sugar honey iced tea and them saying what this team could or couldn't do. Well, you know, there's something else that people are saying this team can't do. There's something else that they're saying, no matter how hard you try, no matter how how well you do it, no matter what goes right for you, you just can't do one thing. You know what that is this year, brother? Getting yourself a quad one win. Show me something. Show me something. Let's get some ice cream. I don't care if you win by 20, if you win by 40, if you win by what. Let's get some Howlin' Kyle rolling up there in Charlottesville, and let's get a, get back home. Your net is heavily scrutinized. Your quad one victories are heavily scrutinized. Well, here's an opportunity. So far, we're 0-4, but here's another shot. You've already seen Virginia. You have a general idea of what they're going to try and throw at you. No excuses. The time is now. If you're going to try and get into the tournament, this is another type of game you have got to go out and get it. There's, I mean, there's no other real way to say it. You have to have this game if you are NC State. Yeah, and Grace and I are often very deliberate about talking about, hey, this game won't hurt you. This game won't help you. This game will. This is a definite will help you game. Yes. This is a definite will help you if you win this one game. So this needs to be a win. Up next, we're going to round out our episode with our final thoughts and predictions for this game on the road after a quick word from our sponsors. Last couple minutes of our Wednesday show, as we always do on a game day, we're going to wrap this up with our final thoughts and our final score prediction for tonight against Virginia. Kenton, I'll let you kick this one off. Final thoughts and a final score. You know, this team, you never really know. As much as you want to say you know and you've got it figured out, you never really know. And I know that there are some people that are going to say, well, one thing you do know is they can't get a quad one win. You know that about this team. And you know what? Technically speaking, you're right up to now. But one thing you can count on is the Wolfpack surprising you when the expectations are the lowest. I think that everybody is picking against the pack in this one. I think that everybody's saying that they have no shot in this one. I still don't trust. I, I understand that the home winning streak is a thing and all that. I don't trust UVA to put up a ton of points. However, there's something in me telling me that this is the game where we get out of our uh, shooting woes in terms of, of, you know, again, kind of getting them out of that pack line defense. The unfortunate part is there's something in me that's also telling me that this is a huge game from Beekman and McNeely. So I'm going to go UVA. 77, NC State 70. Look, it, they don't say it's a tough place to play for no reason, it, because it is. We went up to Charlottesville last year, and we looked awful. And it was the definition of a rock fight until Virginia yeah. kind of cleaned it up at the end and eventually just ran away with it. I'm going to be totally honest here. I think Kent and I are actually pretty much on the same page here. 
my gut, totally transparent, I don't feel very good about this game. This screams a little bit of a letdown, especially the way that we've been playing lately. However, I think there is a little bit of comfort in knowing, one, Kevin Keats actually does very well against Virginia in his tenure. He typically plays pretty solid games against them, maybe minus the game up in Virginia last year. And two, you've already seen them this year. And again, to be honest, I wasn't that impressed. I think Beekman is a spectacular basketball player, and McNeely can light it up from deep. Outside of those two guys, the the offense is tough to watch, as it always has been, mm-hmm. and their defense is nowhere near as aggressive uh, as, as years past. And NC State, we have the superior athletes. I think we have the superior depth as well yeah. so it's going to come down to shooting and as an nc state fan of the last couple of weeks you grit your teeth a little bit say oh boy I, i'm starting to get worried about what i might be in for on wednesday night if this is about as a toss-up as toss-up gets for me i can see a world where nc state takes advantage of what virginia gives them and they go on the road and get a tough win i can see a world where we go out and it's another rock fight and virginia just basically suffocates the life out of us. So because Kenton took Virginia in this game, I'm going to be devil's advocate. I'm going to take NC State on the road, 71 to 64. It's much closer this time, but it's also low scoring yet again. That's fair. That's fair. I, I wouldn't be surprised by that. I don't. This is not a game where I'm like, there's not a world where NC State wins. That's why if you heard me describing it, you're like, oh, is yeah. he flip-flopping? Who is he picking? Because there are so many things going for both teams in this one. So we, we just got to see. You, you know, the old adage goes with NC State, when you expect the least, that's when you get the most. But the problem is we're kind of expecting a lot because it has to be now. This yeah. is a quad one opportunity. You only have, I guess, a little bit more than a handful of these left. If you continue to squander them, you're going to pay for it later. You Absolutely. Have to try, I, I don't know how many times I can say this. You have to win this game. It will end your season. No, but. If you want to make the tournament, this is one that you have to put in your pocket. So the urgency is something that you're going to be able to sniff probably right from the tip off. If NC State has it, I think you're going to see it right away. If they don't, you might also see that right away. But it's uh, buckle up for this one. That's all I'm going to say. That'll do it for us here on Wednesday. As always, be sure to hit that like button on your way out the door if you have not already. Drop your comments in the comment box. Tell us what you think this game is going to look like tonight up in Charlottesville. Tell you what, give us a final score as well. Tell us how you think that this one will play out. Um, And do this on Twitter. You know, we've been getting a lot of responses on Twitter to some of our tweets. Interact with us both on Twitter and here on YouTube. But we love getting as many responses as we can. Me personally, I just like to see how people think. It's interesting to me. So interact with us as much as you can and hit that subscribe button as well. Tough game on the road tonight. We'll be looking forward to it. You can find us on Twitter for our in-game updates. Until then... Go back. Go back.